Don't do this when you enter credit card charges in QuickBooks Desktop. Hey everybody, this is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University and wanted to put together this video. Uh, there's uh, actually a couple things you shouldn't do when you're entering credit card charges in QuickBooks Desktop, but I'm just gonna go through uh, one of these today. And I see a lot of people do this and hopefully uh, this video will help you do it the right way. So here we are on the home screen. Uh, this is a sample company file, which uh, if you have QuickBooks Desktop, you can access. Uh, they have multiple different uh, sample company files that you can go in and play around with. So, all right, so here we are. We have a credit card statement we just got. And, you know, generally this, you know, is going to apply uh, when you don't pay off the credit card balance every month. Now, in theory, it, it does apply also if you do pay off the credit card statement every month, but there is a little bit different way that you can enter credit card charges. So, you know, if you pay off the statement every single month, what some people will do is just go, go to vendors, enter bills, enter a bill for the credit card, and then just kind of parse out all the expenses. But what I'm going to show you today is the proper way to do it so that you get the expenses in the right time period. All right, so we're up here. We're going to go to banking. We're going to go to enter credit card charges. So you get your statement. Uh, this also applies when you are, uh, you know, accepting transactions from a bank feed. You want to make sure this is right. So in general, you're going to get your statement. You're going to go through. You're going to uh, put in all of your credit card charges. So if you're doing it one by one and not using a bank feed, you're going to go here and we're just going to choose somebody here. Uh, we have the date, the reference number. If there is a transaction number, you can put that in there and then we'll put in the amount. All right. So let's say it's $50 and we have to specify the account. We're going to say bank service charges. We put on a credit card to bank of any city. Now here, is what you don't want to do. This date is going to default to today's date. What a lot of people will do is either let it default to today's date, this again, 2023, this is in the future, it's a sample file, or what they will do is use the statement date on the credit card. So let's say the statement date was 12, 10, 23, and they'll use that date. Now, don't do that. Here's why. A credit card charge is an expense when you charge it, even if you are cash basis. So if you file your taxes on a cash basis, you know, you track everything on a cash basis, credit card charges are still expenses when the charge happens. So it's not when you pay the bill, it's not when you, um, you know, enter the bill, it is when you charge a, whatever you charge on your credit card. So, what you want to do is on the statement, and this should come through on the bank fee, but you want to verify, is it'll show, okay, transaction date. That's when you want to enter that. So if this transaction happened uh, 11-30-23 instead of 12-10, which was the date of the statement, now when we enter this and we save it, it's going to put this expense in November versus December. And this is really, really important um, especially if you're using QuickBooks to track your business, because you could be either overstating or understating expenses in a certain month, depending on what date that you put in here. Okay. Now the problem is when, when you do pay off the entire credit card. So let's say that, you know, what, what a lot of people do is they'll say, okay, I'm going to enter bills, uh, for the credit card in general, this is not where you go, but if you pay off the whole balance every month, you can put in the vendor and then you put in all your different accounts for all the different charges for the month. Uh, and then what people will do though, is just put the statement date. Okay. So if the statement date again was 12, 10, 2023, and they put in this bill and they go to pay bills and they have all the expenses here, all those expenses are going to be in the books as of 12, 10. So even if a lot of those charges that make up all these various accounts and expenses were in November, uh, you're still going to count them in December. So again, I get it. I understand why you want to just enter a bill. If you're paying it off every single month, definitely you can do that. Uh, but the correct way and the way you really want to do it is to go to the enter credit card charges. And again, if it's bank feed, fine. 
and make sure that you enter the transaction date from your statement, not the statement date. Okay, any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave those below. Happy to uh, give you some uh, brief answers here on YouTube. Uh, for QuickBooks University members uh, at qbuniversity.org, I do answer all of their questions personally and in uh, great, great detail. So head over there, qbuniversity.org.